Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three in our series on Eagle Rock, the Frick family's summer home in Pride's Crossing, Massachusetts. My name is Kim Katie, and I am the assistant curator of the Car and Carriage Museum. On today's episode, we'll take a look at how the Frick spent their time while at Eagle Rock, some of the outbuildings on the grounds, as well as the staff that cared for the Frick's transportation collection. Beginning in 1902, the Frick family began um, leasing the Herbert M. Sears Estates Woodrock, also located in Pride's Crossing. And they were there for about two summers, two seasons, up until 1904, when they rented the estate of Robert S. Bradley for another season or so. The family has always seemed to enjoy the North Shore of Boston, and so it's not surprising that they would rent from some of Frick's um, business associates while deciding on where they wanted to build their own estate on the area. Their love of carriage driving had the Fricks um, transporting their vehicles of their own collection here in, in Pittsburgh up to these rental places in Massachusetts. So in 1902, you can see from the bottom receipt, um, they had a carriage bought and sent to Woodrock while they were there through the French Carriage Company. They also purchased a number of other carriages for use while in Pride's Crossing. Um, and you can see from the far right receipts that in June of 1903, they actually used the French Carriage Company to store a, a vehicle while probably waiting for the next season to come into play, either not wanting to bring it back to Pittsburgh because they weren't going to be able to use it or possibly getting ready for it to be transported over to um, Eagle Rock once it was complete. So every season, every summer, the family would have the carriages loaded up. They would use Glasson Camps and Son carriage builders here in Pittsburgh to transport the carriages and horses up to the rental locations. And they would stay there for the summer and then travel again by rail back down to Pittsburgh at the end of the season in the fall. So the person responsible for kind of orchestrating this is the coachman, James Elmore, who we'll talk about a little bit later but he um, worked with Lesson Camps and Son to load these pieces up into, into train cars and get them to the family for their summer season. Once the stables were complete in at Eagle Rock, um, the, the horses and the carriages remained there permanently. The stables located here, you can see on the map, um, were located on the far side of the grounds across the street from the main house and included a paddock for training and exercising the horses, as well as it was adjacent to the gardener's cottage, um, the gardens, and the tennis courts. On the same side of the house as the main of the main house is the auto house, a newly constructed building for the family to house Frick's growing car collection. So Frick begins purchasing vehicles about 1901 with um, a Mercedes Daimler as his first vehicle, but he is an avid collector of cars and enjoys motoring quite a bit. And so it's not surprising that they would have built an auto house on the grounds as well. The cars are really starting to pick up as not just novelty, but more everyday use. And so the, the garage is not surprising to be included on the grounds. Um, you can see from the images here that the, the footprint of the auto house is considerably smaller than the stable. Understandably so, cars are still kind of coming into their own. Most people don't have a good number of them, but also because they don't require a lot of maintenance and storage. So vehicles don't have horses attached to them, unlike the stables that have to house the horses, feed the horses, bed the horses, as well as the staff to care for them. So understandably that the footprint of the buildings would be considerably um, contrasted contrasting. So the images that we have here on the right are above is a stables, a very lovely place, and then the bottom is the auto house facade. While at Eagle Rock, the family enjoyed carriage driving considerably. Henry, up in the right-hand corner here, um, preferred horseback riding and did so often when he visited Eagle Rock. Helen, Adelaide, Helen and Adelaide enjoyed sharpening their carriage driving skills on the sprawling trails that Eagle Rock offered. Carriage driving was actually one of the few um, proper sporting activities for ladies of the Gilded Age, and Eagle Rock with its 50 acres really allowed the, the women to hone their driving skills. 
once the family finished with their leisure um, and fun activities, once the, the sled rides and the, the carriage drives were over, the real work began for the, the staff required to care for these pieces. Following a carriage drive, stable hands were responsible for pulling down the horses, cleaning out stables, which in this case could accommodate up to 18 horses, feeding and bedding the horses, cleaning and conditioning the leather harnesses, and washing down the carriages before returning them to the carriage room, which could hold at least 15 carriages. The stable hands, the staff responsible for the carriages and the upkeep of the, of the horses and the stables, lived on the grounds and actually lived in the stables themselves on the second floor. This area included a sitting room, kitchen, dining room, and sleeping quarters for up to seven. At the request of Mrs. Frick, the stables also included an indoor bathroom so that outside staff would not have to use the main house. In addition to indoor plumbing, the stables were also outfitted with electricity provided by a powerhouse on the grounds of the estate. All of these, the, these parts, the carriages, um, arranging for the carriage drives, making sure the harnesses were cleaned and conditioned, making sure the carriages were washed, making sure the horses were cared for, all fell on James Elmore, the family's longtime coachman. He was hired in 1895 um, out of the Philadelphia area. A very skillful and well-liked man, Helen would later describe him as a friend and entertainer, and more quickly became responsible for all things concerning the carriages and horses at Clayton. Once the stables at Eagle Rock were completed, James and his wife Susan relocated to Pride's Crossing, where he continued to manage the staff and care for the carriages. So once the stables were complete, um, Elmore was requested by the family to move to Pride's Crossing permanently. As you can imagine, um, a bit of a change for a man coming from the Philadelphia and Pittsburgh area to then move to kind of a quiet area north of Boston. But because he was um, an employee of, of the family, he agreed to it and went without much, much questioning of the, the matter. Upon arriving at Prize Crossing at Eagle Rock, um, Elmore was not really happy with the situation. It's, it's hard to tell if he didn't like the environment. I'm sure it wasn't necessarily the, the residence, because as you saw, the stables were quite large and beautiful, but it might have just been the change of, of scenery for him that he was not very much enjoying. And so as early as 1906, almost, almost immediately upon arriving, he wrote to Frick about his dissatisfaction with the, the situation and his intent to resign. The letter on the left is a response from Frick's secretary asking Elmore to reconsider and talk it over with Frick when he arrives at Eagle Rock. Frick must have been quite persuasive because um, James Elmore does stay on as the family's coachman through um, up until his death in 1913. Uh, following his death, Susan Elmore returns to Philadelphia and Frick provides him with quarterly, provides her, sorry, provides her with quarterly payments of $100, James's monthly salary at the time of his death for up to about a year. So the receipt on the right-hand side shows those payments being made to Mrs. Elmore. And it shows, I think, what uh, Amanda Gillen was speaking about last week's episode about the care of the family and, and making sure that the, the, the care from the family for their staff and showing that they, they want to make sure that their staff was properly cared for. So here, this individual who worked for the family for about 18 years um, upon his death, his wife was made sure to be taken care of afterwards. Although riding and carriage driving were some of the most popular leisure activities while at Eagle Rock, motoring also appears to have been a, an enjoyable pastime of the family as well. But it was an activity that early on required the knowledge and skill of a chauffeur. George Dupre was employed by the by Frick as a chauffeur from 1901 to 1920. Born in 1879, he was hired by Henry Clay Frick when he purchased his first automobile, the 1902 Mercedes Daimler. Um, auto technology was so new that a man who had driving and mechanical skills could make a very nice living. Dupre's starting salary was $125 a month compared to, and that was in 1902, compared to James Elmore's salary of $100 a month in 1913 after working for the family for 18 years. Um, Dupre was a chauffeur in France. He was hired by Henry when he purchased the vehicle and he came over from Europe to the States when that vehicle came over as well. He stayed with the family um, as autos became 
more necessity than novelty, he stayed with the family up through Frick's death in 1919 and was relieved of duty in 1920. But while he was, was employed, he moved to, with the family to New York City in 1906 when they built the Frick, um, what is now the Frick Collection. And he travels with them to Eagle Rock. When at Eagle Rock, his duties may have included picking up guests and family from the local train station, um, taking them on sightseeing tours of the North Shore and Boston, as well as just fun joy rides around the estates. There isn't much information that I've come across really on Dupre's role in, in the greater scheme of things with as far as purchasing. I'm not sure if he served the same role that Elmore did in, in the full management of the, the garage or the carriage or the car house, auto house. Um, but it does, we do have some records that in 1911 and 1912, the Fricks purchased two Pierce Arrows, one Pierce Arrow Brome and one Pierce Arrow Suburban that was purchased in Boston and taken directly to Pride's Crossing. Um, so my guess is that these vehicles were purchased. Perhaps there was not a lot of room in the city for storage. And so the family stored the ones they were not using up here at Eagle Rock in the auto house, of which um, George Dupre was more than likely responsible for their care, upkeep, and knowing their whereabouts. So he may not have had the same role that Elmore had in purchasing feed and livery for staff, but he would have been responsible for knowing where these vehicles were and making sure they were in running condition. Additional inventory records from 1927 indicate um, that Adelaide's 1914 Rolls Royce and 1925 Lincoln Touring Car were also stored at the Eagle Rock Auto House. In addition um, to aid the caretakers of the grounds, a Dodge station car and a four ton truck, along with various tractors and a Harley Davidson were also purchased for the people to get around on the grounds of Eagle Rock. Unfortunately for us, none of these vehicles were, were preserved. In the late 1950s, Helen built a carriage house on the grounds of Clayton to hold the family's carriage collection. So at this time, she realizes that she doesn't necessarily want to keep Eagle Rock as a, as a home She's considering tearing it down. And prior to that, that raising of Eagle Rock, Helen has the 15 carriages that were at Eagle Rock relocated to this new carriage house and stored on the second floor. Um, Helen did have uh, private showings of the collection. So for family and friends, she may take them upstairs to the second floor of the carriage house to kind of walk them through and see the carriages. But a purposeful gallery space would not actually be um, opened or designed until the 1990s. Today the carriage house does still exist on the grounds of the Frick Pittsburgh. It is um, home to our education classrooms and our learning and visitor services um, staff offices. In addition to the carriages, Helen also transported two cars, a 1914 Rolls Royce and a 1931 Lincoln Phaeton um, to the grounds of Clayton, both for vehicles that were owned and driven by Helen that are currently in our collection. Uh, when they arrived here on site, they were actually stored, or at some point they were stored in the Haller House garage, which today is the cafe at the Frick. So interesting, interesting use of space on our site to store these wonderful vehicles. Although the main house at Pride's Crossing was raised in 1969, some outbuildings, including the stables and gar gardener's cottage uh, remained. Today, the stables are luxury condominiums, which you can see up in the right-hand corner here. And the gardener's cottage is a private res residence. Um, when last up for sale, both had an asking price of over a million dollars. So these, these pieces of history do still exist and they still are up there in Pride's Crossing, but they will cost you a, a good price tag if you want to go and live where the Fricks lived. So I want to thank you for joining us on this third episode and our trip around the grounds here at Eagle Rock. Um, I hope you enjoyed the little tour. Up next, Chief Curator and Director of Collection Sarah Hall will highlight some of the objects in, at Eagle Rock um, that are now part of the Frick Pittsburgh's collection. So thank you for joining me and I hope you all have a wonderful day. <laughs>